Hello, Chris. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, nice to meet you. It was like a human. <laughs> yeah, that's <it was> all. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's been so wild with like everything, like just like meeting people in the void, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for uh, willing to do this. Yeah. Thank you so much for reaching out. Super yeah. excited. <laughs> First thing I can ask is, did everything start with uh, sacred earth earthbounds? Dude, oh my God, you really, you really went digging for that, Chris. No, that's awesome. Yeah, like I still remember, um, I, I played Melodius Akakios in Sacred Earth Bond, like, and she was, um, she was like the first like real like indie character that I got to do. Like, it was really cool. I was like, whoa, she's like, actually, like, this is like a real game. It's so cool. Um, yeah, so weird like one of the first things I've ever done for sure but yeah like um I got that part off of like a voice acting forum back when I was like I don't know if I was 16 when I voiced her because I had a reprisal like years later but like I started when I was like 16 so <laughs> yeah and when you moved to um Texas and got all the Funimation was your first character part uh in Holy Night um, so interesting story, like um, my first ever anime um, character was um, Lilith and Holy Night. Um, I actually drove from Ohio to New York for that project. Um, so my first ever Funimation thing was actually um, playing Macbeth in, um, in Divine Gate and uh, um, Clifford brought me in for that. <laughs> but that's definitely, you had like the right first anime project. It's crazy. <laughs> well, I know one of the other early credits would have been the little cat uh, in three, three Leaves, Three Colors. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely, um, that was after I had moved. It was like one of my first things. I was so excited. I was like, I get to voice this cat and this cat has a name. I was like, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> what about with your first um, more darker role? Darker role? Um, oh my gosh. I mean, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. Like, I love dark stuff. Like, I'm into like macabre art and like, I love like darker shows and stuff. So, I can't remember necessarily like what my first dark project is, unless you happen to know, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, would, would it be Akane and Love Tyrant or? Um, Akane, like, Akane is like probably one of, um, so I love, I love Yandere characters. I love voicing psychos, which I promise I'm not a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> but um that's something a psycho would say though but no like I I love voicing those kinds of characters because um they're just my favorite archetype because they're so insane so um I don't know if I would consider that like darker for me because like I think of like something that's like really really messed up for like darker but she's definitely cray like I love her I wish we got a season two <laughs> well, what do you think is the case if you can pick a single one where you've had to get the darkest headspace for Oh, oh man, I got it in my back pocket for you. So probably like, I don't know if you remember this show called, called like King's Game. Oh. Um, yeah. So like basically for anybody who like watches, who doesn't know, it's like basically like, it's like, oh, King's Game, like you get a text message, you have to do what it says or you die. And um, I remember like my girl, like um, it was so funny. Cause like I went in to record this and like, I didn't watch ahead for this. So, like, I didn't know what was going to happen. But, like, my director and engineer was like, oh, did you watch the episode? Do you know, like, what's going on? I was like, no. Like, what's happening? So my girl gets a message where it, she has to kill what she loves most. And so she murders both of her parents. Mm -hmm. And the message doesn't go away. So it's not what she loves most, right? So Chris, her puppy comes into the room she's got this little puppy and she is just like looking up at her with like these big donut eyes and she's looking down at it and she's thinking like oh shit I gotta kill my dog so then she starts choking out her dog like she starts strangling her dog and I had to record that and like I had no warning about it I had nothing um no heads up and the worst part about it was um my first puppy that I ever had looked exactly like this dog and got hit by a car when I was a child so it was just like I was in such a messed up place so she's like strangling her dog and um thankfully she doesn't go through with it the dog lives and then she dies because she can't <laughs> she can't complete the test I'm like you know what girl that's fair could not do either <laughs> <laughs> but uh I was like man what are the odds but that probably put me in the darkest headspace out of like anything I've done I felt changed after that session I was like man I need like a hug <laughs> Well, do you think you have a preference for doing a dramatic opposed to comedy then? Um, I think it's so interesting because I think like drama and comedy are kind of like 
two different sides of like a, a coin. Like usually like if you're good at comedy, you're good at drama and vice versa. So I love both of them. Like I love comedy. Like I love drama for, for different reasons. It's just different. I really like doing funny reacts and like funny, like over the, like really over the top stuff, like, um, like snow and like combatants, um, will be dispatched. Like I love playing snow. <laughs> so getting to do that's super fun. But I also love doing like the more grounded, like really like, um, kind of dramatic stuff like like um like Kokoku I think um was the name of um that show but that had a more definitely more grounded it was still still dark but like they're grounded <laughs> or of course with how crazy uh Gwes was oh Gwes was so much fun um Chris literally like I think Gwes is probably one of my favorite uh performances I've gotten to do because I got to use so much of my range like I don't often get to do like all my like low sexy or crazy stuff and like high pitch stuff, like within a matter of seconds. So it was super, super fun. I remember I was just like sweating. I'm just like, let's go. Cause I'm super, I'm super physical when I'm, when I'm acting. So I'm just like screaming. I'm just like, just like pour, dripping sweat. I'm like, Oh, this is great. <laughs> the cool thing about Jojo is like, because the animation is so big, you can't really go too hard, like with the yelling or like everything. And, um, it's really refreshing because sometimes like when I do stuff, like I go really, really like big on like screaming and stuff and people will tell me like, no, no, like less than that, like pull back. So it was great to be like, no, go harder. It's like, like, hell yeah, let's do it. What <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of related to that? What do you think is the case where you've had to alter your voice the most so far? Oh my gosh. That's a really good question. Um, so I do a lot of audiobooks and um you know when you're voicing like a ton of characters and you're doing the whole book you know like you have to like really switch it up to keep things fresh I have this old lady voice that I do that I I love and I've gotten to use it for a couple games in like some shows but it, it originated from audiobooks and I just I just I love her and it was um something I struggled with for a while because I was like I'll never be able to do an old lady voice and then it just came out of me like a ghost one day I was like this is great she can stay <laughs> What about with anime? What do you think is the case where you've had to do that? Well, I had to use my old lady voice as a sexy nun. Well, actually, she wasn't a sexy nun. She was an old nun. And then I remember I was recording her and Kyle Phillips was like, no, she's too sexy. We got to we got to tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think it's in um, in Fire Force. You can hear me as one of the older lady nuns. But just so you know, she was too hot. Originally, I had to I had to un- unsexify her. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly <laughs> and I know that you have done um a handful of boy, uh, boy voices as well I've, I've found yeah. that I found that every voice actress I talk to kind of has a different process for it do you have like a particular thing that you do yeah like um that's a really good question like for me for boy voices it's mainly like of course like it's a different vocal placement but it's all about the attitude because it's one thing to like change your voice but still kind of deliver things like the way like um that's like more feminine because like, I feel like little girls and little boys tend to have like, I mean, of course there's all kinds of like, you know, in between, but like specifically for like anime tropes, I feel like they have a very specific thought process or like, you know, like boys tend to be like more outspoken or they don't really care like what other people think, or they're like very like one track mind. Whereas like the little girls are a little bit more emotionally sensitive and intelligent. So they'll kind of deliver things like a different way. So for me, I'm just like, yeah, like, hell yeah. I'm all about just doing the thing and I'm just going to do it. And so it's kind of, it's interesting. Yeah. So, um, I guess everybody's process is different, but, um, I'll tend to try to do something a little bit more, um, closer to my natural voice, but like youngified, but then of course, like I can do, like, I can add a lot of texture. My voice already has a little bit of texture in it. So it's really easy just to like kind of push that more if I need to. (laughs) Boys are fun. Like they're really fun to voice. Do you have a particular favorite one that you've done so far? Oh my gosh. Um, I, it's, it's a re- it's really hard. Cause, um, I haven't gotten to voice too many boys, but the ones that I have gotten to voice have been a lot of fun. Um, I believe his name is Jen in cutie honey. Um, I got to, he's just a little pervert. Like he's a little weirdo pervert. So I got to like go over the tub and go eh, le, 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 like that kind of stuff. It was really fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I know you got to be uh, Gaku and beat X as well. Gaku, oh my gosh, I love voicing Gaku. Um, <laughs> this like this like grimy desert child, like he just does not care and like about all about the robots. But, like working on that with Marissa was like super fun. And that was like my first um boy voice, like well, boy character that I got really got to do that had substantial parts, like um, like lines rather for 
any show, but it was really cool. <laughs> and I know it's, well, the character is, I think, genderless, but I haven't seen you talk about Desiree before either as Isaac. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Gosh, yeah, like Isaac, Isaac was hard because I had to do a boy voice in a German accent. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, like I hope like, um, cause with accents, like there are some accents that I keep really fresh and like I use a lot, like I use my British a lot. I use like my, my, well, my RP British, I use that a lot. And then, um, like my, my Southern or like cowboy cowgirl accent, like I use that a lot. So it's really fresh but German, like I can do German and I used to be really good at German. And then it kind of just, cause I don't do it a lot. I was just like, Oh no. <laughs> so it was really hard to like do an accent that you don't use all the time and have to hit flaps and then do it as a child. So it was, <laughs> it was a lot of layers going on, mm-hmm. but Chris, you're awesome. You're like digging up all this stuff. Nobody talks to me about This is so cool. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, I was going to say my favorite, probably my favorite boy role of yours is a uh, young Kaoru and Tata can't fall in love. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It was so cool. Like, um, I love getting to do that. And, um, voicing young Kaoru is what actually got me Jun and Cutie Honey. Cause David Wald, like was directing both of those. He was like, I love your boy voice. It's like, oh, thank you. I'll do more. <laughs> yeah. And this was going back. I think it would have been early on to a uh, pulse trans in Jun and Chan. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, she was probably, um, cause I, I've been developing my low range for like years and years and years. Cause I've been, I've been, um, God, like I've been voice acting, um, since 2007. So it's been a hot minute. And, um, at first, like, it, like I didn't have much of a low range, but I've worked on it like for years and years and years. So like when I got to voice, um, Pulse and Judy, it was like the first time, like I got to use my low voice for an anime. It was also one of my one of my first couple <laughs> shows I got to do. So it was really exciting. Mm-hmm. I did think it was funny too, that I saw you mention before that you started with a, using a karaoke microphone from Best Buy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like it was, it was crazy. Cause like I originally um, had like this little crappy laptop and the built-in microphone for that when I was practicing. And I was just like, they were like, you need a better microphone. And I was like, mom, can we go get a microphone? And um we got a little Best Buy microphone and just practiced with that. And then I was like, oh, wait, this is also like, you know, not, not the best solution. Yeah. <laughs> so um, very slowly over time made upgrades. <laughs> and again, uh, this is a, uh, what have been when you were in LA, but nobody else ever talks about our Pretty Boy Detective Club. And I, I really like that. Oh, that show is so cool. Like I, I love, well, first of all, I love pretty boys and the fact that there's a whole detective club of them is great, but I'm like, Ray is so hot. Like I, I it's, it's crazy because I didn't audition for it. I, um, I just got cast as a part and, um, I Google my characters beforehand just so I kind of like know what's like happening before the session. Cause I don't know what they look like or anything. Um, so I looked up, I was like, she is, she's, she's fine. She's a fine lady. And I was like, Whoa, this is great. I'll take it. Like she's got legs for days. So, um, it was really fun. She's really chatty, but it was like, the animation was so pretty. Just like the shots that I got to see. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is, this is gorgeous. And is there a special kind of story about how you met Howard? It, it's crazy because we've known each other for as long as I've been voice acting. So like, um, we were both on a voice acting forum back, back in 2007, I think I was there before him, 2008. And like, we knew of each other, but we weren't like in the same circles and, um, like, uh, but we had like some mutual friends and, um, it's funny because like, um, we became really close friends when we were like both dating other people. And like, it was totally like platonic, just like really good friendship. And then we both found ourselves not dating people. And then, um, I'm very direct romantically. So <laughs> um, basically he was like flirting a little bit. And I was like, hang on, is this like a real thing? Like, is this a real thing? Or is this just like, I, I need to know. Cause I, I don't play games. I'm like, is this a real thing? And just, yeah, no, I'm interested. So it was, it was really cool. But basically the long story or the short story of the long stories we met online. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just through a mu- mutual love of like games and, and anime and stuff. So it's, it's really cool. <laughs> And when you guys did uh, move to LA, what was the job that got you into SAG? Um, Howard actually moved to LA before me because um, he got a job as a game developer um, at, with Riot Games. He was um, part of um, 
the the VO um, side there for for Valorant, um, which is really cool. And uh, so he moved a year ahead of me, and then I was trying to kind of get all my all my ducks in a row and everything. And um, basically, like COVID happened, and then. I was like, well, I'm going to move anyway. So like, you know, roommates, like we moved. And, um, but as far as like, um, the job that got me, um, like SAG eligible, it was, um, arena of valor, like, um, got me like that. And, um, it's so funny. Cause I actually, my director for that was Michael Sorich. And that's how I met him and started working with him on stuff. And, um, he brought me in for Jujutsu Kaisen after that session. And, you know, like, um, it was really cool. And then like Comey happened and it was like this little, like, kind of like this crazy, you never know what's going to happen and like, you know, or what's going to lead to what. So it's really cool. <laughs> I would think uh, with LA roles, the cells at work would have been early too. I think cells at work was um, the first like kind of like um, bang zoom thing I had done. Like I had, um, I had gotten to do some walla on, um, Konosuba, one of the Konosuba movies, like right before. And um, I did some Walla and like bits for that. And then um, Cells at Work was like my first actual part with with BZ, which was really cool because I'm like, I've been wanting to work here for a while. So it's awesome. <laughs> this is probably obvious to ask, but what, out of all the characters you play, who do you think you have the most affinity with? I feel like there's so much of my personality in so many of them. <laughs> but um, I guess like for right now, like, um, you know, like Comey is like really, really special to me. And I think, um, I mentioned in like, um, my cast announcement that, um, you know, like I, I, I've grown up like with social anxiety disorder and it took a lot, a lot, a lot to get me to the point where I can even talk to you, Chris, like this, even though there's like a computer screen and stuff. So like, um, it's, it's been, it's been wild. So like, that's like also not just cause it's the most recent, but like, because it's like really, really special in that regard. Um, and just, I didn't, I didn't audition for Comey. So like, it just kind of happened. So it's, it's so kind of crazy, like how kind of like certain things I say, like, will come to you, like things that are meant for you, will like kind of come to you. So I think that's just really, it's really cool. And like, and like special that I get to share that with that character. Cause you don't see that a lot in, in anime where a character specifically like has like trouble, like communicating things because of anxiety, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. And on the on the topic of Comey, I uh, guess the biggest question. Um, sure. Do you think, or like, was it difficult to bring acting to that? It's hard in a different way because she just makes a lot of sounds, and it sounds crazy. But like, you'd think we'd just be shotgunning these sounds, but like, we're not. Like, we're doing multiple takes of them to make sure like we're conveying like the proper like emotion. And like the Japanese say, she did such an amazing job with it everything I was like really nervous I'm like I need to make sure it's like you know really good um but for me like it just it, it's so interesting because Sorch didn't know that I had struggled with social anxiety like he had no idea and I guess like because of how I am now or like how people interact with me they wouldn't guess that that's something that I've like dealt with so he like literally had no idea for instance like the scene where you like first hear her like talking and she's like you know like talking to her little like little, little cat and she loves cats um and she's like you know like it just like why can't I like do this anymore and um it's it's interesting because like to me that kind of and I haven't read the manga like I want to read the manga um I did watch ahead on the the show before like I recorded because I was able to because it was out <laughs> but um I haven't I haven't read the manga but like for me like that kind of at least based off the English script like seeing those words it's like okay well she wasn't she didn't always like it wasn't always to this degree. She was able to at least talk at like more at some point, maybe not a lot, but like to the point where she can't say anything anymore. And um, it's very, very similar to like kind of what happened with me. Cause like, I don't, like I've always had like um, anxiety for like social situations, but it got really bad. Like to the point where like, I wouldn't leave the house, like where even just, um, it's such a visceral memory, Chris, but like, I remember being at the library printing something because we couldn't afford a printer at the time and um I loaded the paper in the machine wrong and like because I, I didn't want to ask for help because like I didn't I'm just like I don't want to ask anybody for anything I just want to just want to do it on my own so I loaded the paper wrong and like um the one of the librarians like came over and she was like she kind of like was a little mean to me about it and I just remember just like immediately like, bursting into tears like I had to like I just had to leave like I had so much anxiety just from like that interaction and um, I, I still hate phone calls. Like I hate phone calls. I hate phone calls so much. I hate talking on the phone. I'm like, just text me, just email me. <laughs> um, so I hate phone calls and I hate opening mail. 
too. It's weird. It's some, some weird stuff, but, um, yeah, like it, it wasn't always that bad, but like it got to this point and like the more I kind of isolated myself and the less, like I started like, you know, pushing myself outside of my comfort zone with talking to people, the worse it got and the less I was able to do. So, um, yeah. So like, I definitely felt a lot of them like, Oh my gosh, she just wants to talk so bad. And, um, I get emotional very easily. So like, um, when we were recording like the chalkboard conversation scene, I was like literally crying. I'm just like, Oh my gosh, she just, she just wants a friend. Like, you know, it's just, it's so sweet. And, um, life's weird, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of your other uh, personal favorite moments to record? Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I love, I love that chalkboard scene. It's really beautifully done. Like the whole show is gorgeous. Like the animation is, is beautiful. Um, <laughs> like there's so much of the show so funny. Like I, I, in a lot of it, like I'm just like reacting to like sounds and noises, but like um, there wasn't like too much going on when she was going into the coffee shop, but like when she's like going to the coffee shop to try to order something and she can't do it. And like that back and forth, like I felt that, like I literally like I've been in that situation where it's like, oh no, like I, I rehearse like what I'm going to get like over and over, like before I like order anything. So I just like, just like, <laughs> you know, um, so that was really cute. And, um, the scene where she's like writing in the sand to, um, Tadano, like, and she's like ha- trying to have that moment with him. And then she gets like too freaked out and like embarrassed and like, she doesn't want him to see, like, I thought that was really sweet. And, um, anytime, anytime when she's just like, you know, being super vulnerable or like trying to like, you know, like speak words. I've just, I've loved being able to do that. And then of course, like the cell phone conversation too, where he like calls her and she picks up and pretends to be like an answering, like, like, like you have the wrong number. Like that was really funny. So, um, yeah, I just love the whole show. (laughs) Yeah. I can say that, uh, the scene in episode four at the end where, uh, they saved how to know from Yamai and then they're in the school <laughs> they're, they're in the school and then yeah. he actually talks again that was just when I watched that for the first time uh I just got like my eyes got wet because your your uh, your performance was so well done oh thank you Chris I appreciate <laughs> it like um <laughs> It was so funny because like storage was always just like, wow, you're like, you're a softie, aren't you? Because I'm just like, oh, like, in, like in tears, just like, oh my gosh, just like, uh, like every time before I was like, it's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. That, that means a lot to me, like, um, especially because it hits so close to home with like that kind of thing. I'm just like, man, <laughs> um, it's such a, such a beautifully done title. And uh, yeah. what are some of your other favorite character interactions that she has with other characters? <laughs> I actually really love Yamai. Like, I'm not going to lie. I think, I think Christina did like an amazing job with her. And I just, I love that. Again, I like Yandere. So like, I love that like extreme character type. So like, I like her. I think she's great. Um, Najima is amazing. Um, And then, you know, like, I love like, it's really sweet, like her interactions with Tadano because he just, he just wants to help so much. And like, he cares, but he also doesn't judge her like negatively for, communicating the way she does he's like very like supportive in a way he's like trying to meet her in like the terms that she is kind of confined herself to and is trying to put like him and like um like um, Najima are trying to like break her out of her comfort zone and going back to like my personal experience like that's basically like how I kind of got better at like you know interacting with other people and like interacting with the world was um, doing things that scared me, even though they scared me and pushing myself slowly, like just just even like going and opening a bank account, like was a huge thing for me, like going in and opening a bank account when I was younger was like, just so terrifying to me. And then it's like, oh, if I can do this then I can do something else and then kind of like slowly working your way up. So I think, um, it's a very realistic approach with Comey, even if sometimes like Najima bullies Comey a little bit into doing certain things. <laughs> um, like, I'm not going to be your friend unless you do this. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll go do the thing. I want you to be my friend. Um, but yeah, I think that's like, that's the kind of a good way is like challenging yourself and like starting with small steps. And then like those small steps could become something bigger over time. Mm-hmm. Well, considering how much you do relate to her, then was there any, um, certain parts of the series that, that were difficult to record or was it mostly easy for you? It's challenging with, um, Comey because so much is conveyed in just sounds. 
And it sounds so much easier than it is, but like literally, like if you have words, like, you know, it's, it's kind of like a tool, like it's like, here's, here's what I'm saying. And like, there's subtext and everything, but if you're just making sounds and you only have like a fraction of a second <laughs> to like elicit a sound that kind of has all that same subtext, it's, it's hard. It's really, it's challenging in a different way. And like, um, I love doing reactions and like, I love doing like this doesn't apply to comedy, but I love doing co combat and like screaming stuff and everything. So having to kind of like do like these little like sounds, some are big, some are like, you know, very, very um, grounded. And then having like, oh, like this is how she's feeling about all of these things in like a squeak, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um but the squeaks are fun and um my first session it was kind of like I wasn't used to just like squeaking on command like that like so I kind of had to like figure I'm like okay where where is this and then I was like practicing at home I'm like okay we're good I got it <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, what would you uh like personally like to see happen with her character I I'm already like so happy with where things are going. I love kind of like her, like, you know, getting more friends, like opening up more, like participating in like even just little games, even if she's not saying anything, it's just nice to see that she's like participating in stuff. And um, so I'd love to see her do more. I'd love to see her. And again, I haven't read the manga, so I have no idea what happens, but like, I'd like to see her um, try to use more words and phrases. And um, I, I mean, Again, I don't know like what's canon, but I feel like having recorded as her that I feel like she has feelings for Tadano. So I'd like to see something in that kind of vein like happen. Um, but I'm not limiting myself to just that character. Like, you know, it's 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 whatever. Like what whatever happens. Like Komi can love who Komi loves. Like I don't I have no agenda there. It's just whatever it happens to be. But that's just kind of like where I'm at now, especially because he's like kind of her first friend. There's some stuff happening there, I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know you did say that uh you didn't have to audition for it. So was that just given to you? Yeah, it's it's weird. It's so weird, Chris. Like, cause um some stuff out here, like just in general, whether it be Texas or um Los Angeles, like um, there's stuff that's cast off of demo reels, there's stuff that's cast off of auditions, there's stuff that's cast off of just um people having worked with you previously on stuff and just bringing you in for that part. Like I know everything goes through an approval process through clients, so it's never just like being like, here's a thing. It has to get like approved by multiple people. But um, yeah, I did not audition for for Comey I don't know if anybody auditioned for that show honestly like I've, I have no idea and um yeah so it just it's kind of crazy how it just kind of happened but um I'm so glad that I got to like I got to do that because I, re I really love her and doing the squeakums little squeakums <laughs> this was going back to um other roles uh yeah uh, you said that it was uh like a dream for you to become involved with Fire Emblem yes oh my goodness I love Fire Emblem one of my first ever, um, cause I love games. I've loved games my whole life. My mom was, my mom was slash is a gamer. So that's where I get it from. <laughs> like, um, she loves like Tomb Raider and Resident Evil and Silent Hill. And, um, like we'd play Mortal Kombat together when I was way too young to be playing that game. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So like, I've always loved games and like anime, of course, but, um, yes, yeah, so, like one of my first ever, games for like um I think like god like Game Boy Color or something was um was the I think the Fire Emblem that came over here was one with Lynn in it um that was my first ever Fire Emblem and I've played every single one since I love Fire Emblem games um I've played the ones on the GameCube like you know like um Path of Radiance and everything so I was just so excited that I got to um you know play um play Vika and um I believe that's how you say her name I don't she never had a voice like I don't <laughs> I think, I think it's Vika. Um, yeah. So like getting to play her was so cool. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a big bird. <laughs> I'm a big bird. <laughs> How do you think you could, uh, relate to her at all? Um, she's, well, I mean, like who doesn't want to be a bird. Right. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she, um, she goes through, she goes through a lot. And like, I feel the wonderful thing about like games and like shows and stuff is that like so many characters have like so much depth to them that I feel like that like anybody can connect with um pretty much any character it just depends on what facet of that character and then there are some that are just like this is literally me and like those those happen every now and then which is really cool but um yeah she's just 
She's just quiet, living her best bird life. She's dealt with some shit. I've dealt with some shit. Who hasn't dealt with some shit? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Wish I had wings though. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> and then with with uh, you know, and Guilty Gear, was that um like a voice match situation audition that you had? Um, so for the audition, like um, and it, it's so speaking, speaking of like stuff that's like a dream come true, like I've loved Guilty Gear. Like I love fighting games, I've loved Guilty Gear for years. And um, Eno is such an iconic character. Like I've loved her, I've always loved her design. I can't play her for shit because she's hard. <laughs> I was more of like um uh like a May player. Um, she's a lot more user-friendly. Um, but um, yeah, like uh I got I got the audition for her. And um, I was told to submit two versions, one that was like kind of like um, not necessarily like a voice match situation, but like more close to like what like, um, you know, has been done with her before, like vocally, like for age, age, more like age. And then um, then to do my own take on it. And then so I submitted both of them. And I can't believe it happened, but like I got, I got cast, which was amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like the Eno that you hear is just my version of Eno, um, or Dami Mommy, as I call her. <laughs> Are you a fan of the, uh, like Shadow Hearts games? Uh, yes, I am, sir. I, I love Shadow Hearts and, um, I've, my, my Alice cosplay is like floating around out there somewhere but like I love Shadow Hearts so much because I love historical fiction it's super dark and messed up and um it's also an RPG which are like my favorite types of games but um, I'm really sad because it came out around the same time that Final Fantasy X did so it got super yeah. eclipsed which sucks because it's such a good game and um Shadow Hearts 2 is so good um I don't care for the third one but two out of three is not bad <laughs> yeah I was gonna say if it was ever like redone or had an anime it would be cool to see you in that I would die. Like, listen, I would voice a dog in that. Woof. Like, I'm ready. Like, I don't care. <laughs> Just want to be in it. <laughs> kind of related to that, too. Uh, how did you get involved with the Pokemon franchise? Yeah, um, it's it's crazy. Like, I just, um, I, I did some auditions. Like, I had some auditions appear. And then um, I happened to get cast, which is which is wild. Like, getting to voice, like, some of the Pokemon, like, like, um, like, Amoongus, I think is the name. It was crazy. Like I was like, whoa, um, this is just enjoy my strange mushroom monkey sounds. Cause that's what I tried to do. Like, I don't know, but, um, so that was fun. And then voicing, um, Diantha was really interesting because it was prelay like for that. So we just recorded and the whole cast was in a call together. And, um, I had like, I think I had like one line, but it was really cool. Cause I was like, Whoa, this is neat. And I got to hear everybody else perform. So it was awesome. <laughs> this is going back to a uh, kind of more darker, but, uh, sure. has there ever been an anime or something that you've worked on that you had to step away from because it was so draining? Um, I'm usually pretty much a game for anything, like for better or for worse, Chris. Like I'm pretty much game for just about anything. Um, the dog thing like that, like I didn't like step away. Like, I mean, I was dead in the show after that. So I guess it doesn't really matter. Like I died, but, um, yeah, like I definitely like just needed, like, I'm like, I need to chill. Like my brain is in, is just, it's not great. But, um, yeah, aside from that, like shock me with like dark content especially because my favorite series are really dark like I think one of my favorite anime series is like like dance so it's really it's really hard to like shock me I guess <laughs> that's a good question though oh thanks <laughs> and then on talking about a uh, attack on titan do you also find yeah. it easy to relate to peak I love her I love her so much and the best like I'm sleepy she's a little sleepy like it's great um but I, I was a huge fan of Attack on Titan back when it first came out. So, and there's not, there's not a lot of female characters in, in the show, Chris, as I'm sure you are well aware. So the fact that like, to go from um, like being a fan of the show before I was doing stuff, um, because I, I've been, I've been doing like professional like work for a very long time, but like a lot of it was commercial. A lot of it was like indie games and stuff. And then like moving into like, the anime game market like on like that wasn't just like on indie scale um took time so to go from like a fan to be able to 
actually be in the show is so unbelievable. And to play um Peek, like I I love her. She's so intelligent. She's so loyal to her friends. And like she just she's got such a good head on her shoulders. And I just love her personality. But um <laughs> so do, do you do you want story time? Do you want story time? Because I have a story. <laughs> Okay, so story time. Um, I did not audition for Peak. This this weird st- keeps happening, but um, so basically, I was recording um years and years and years ago because I voiced the Cart Titan before I voiced Peak proper. Um, mm. and I had to wait years to even be like, I'm the Cart Titan, let alone <laughs> be able to be like, I voiced Peak too. Um, so I was working on a different show with Mike McFarlane, um, who's the director of Attack on Titan, and um. I was brought in just for like a, like a little bitty in the show. Um, so I, I voiced this character. She was um, a drug addict who was attacking somebody and trying to kill them with a knife, but she looked exactly like Peek. Like, let me just put that out there. She looks exactly like Peek, but she's a crazed drug addict. who's like trying to kill somebody. So um, it was really funny. Like I, I recorded that, it was super fun really short. And then, um, I was brought in for the cart Titan not too long after he was like, Hey, you did such a good job with that drug addict. You could you, like, you, you, like, I thought you'd be great for peak. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So you just, you just never know. Like, I'm always happy to be involved in anything and like do anything. Like, listen, I'm happy to be a cat. Like I'm happy to be a dog. I'm just happy to be involved in shows, but like, um, there's no small parts and like, you never know what could lead to something else. Like you could be voicing a crazy drug addict bit and then you could be a cart Titan. Like, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> That's my mini story time for you. <laughs> what about with uh, what your first like LGBT series be citrus? Yeah, I think, um, I think so. Like, and it was, it was so interesting. Like um, it's, it's a beautiful title. I know like some people think like the relationship is like, can be problematic at times. Um and I understand that it's just like real relationships are also problematic and messy. So I don't necessarily like, it'd be great if we had more LGBT content, like in general, but um, I still like, there's a lot of um, friends I have in the community that really love that show despite its problems. But um, yeah, like May was really, really challenging and fun to voice because she's very similar situation where she's very like um, kind of she's more stoic than some other characters. Like, but it's not because she's emotionless. Like she's got a lot going under the surface and she's been, you know, she's dealt with a lot of trauma. So when I was voicing her, um, I've tried to bring that to the character and like make it like nuanced in that regard where like, you know, she's not just saying stuff to say it. Like there's a reason why she's behaving the way she's behaving. And like, especially the more problematic stuff, like that's how she's only ever known like love and affection to be. Mm -hmm. So it's why she kind of does things in that way. So, but yeah, really, really cool show. I wish we had more like with everything. I wish we had more. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Similar to that too, uh, with the, not an uh, LGBT series, but the same kind of character type with uh, Hanebato. Yeah, the thing about Hanebato, the thing about Ayano and Hanebato, like, first of all, I loved her, but we had, like, spoiler alert, crazy, like, flip to where it's like, ah, she's, like, the villain? Like, it's crazy. Like, she went from being just like, ah, oh, yes. And she she is traumatized, like, in different ways, much like May is. But, like, definitely she went from just like, oh, yeah, to like, I'm crazy. And, like, she had the crazy Yandere eyes. I was like, oh, my gosh, my typecast, I'm here for it. It just happened. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, oh, yeah, like a new, a new version of Galactic Heroes. I haven't seen you talk about that much. Yeah, like, I'm, there's, there's so much. Like, it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know a ton about galactic heroes outside of what my girl is doing like she's just kind of vibing with this old man I guess you know (laughs) trying to live her best life (laughs) um yeah so like I'm always excited to see like more stuff come back and it's it's really interesting to get to like reprise like roles like years later and be like oh hello I remember you old friend (laughs) somewhat similarly it was cool to see you um direct the recent city hunter movie Thank you. Like it was, it was really fun. So my favorite 
may, like this, this is completely unintentional. A lot of stuff I tend to direct just happens to have a very attractive male sociopath in it. I don't, I don't make the rules. It just happens. And the same thing happened in um, city hunter, but it's like, that's my favorite, like male character archetype. So I was just like, yes, let's hammer this down. Let's just, let's go for it. But, um, it was really cool to work on something that's so iconic. Like I would die if we got to like do more from that series in general. <laughs> Do you have a favorite series that you have uh, or project that you've directed so far? Oh man, I love everything I work on. Um, because I'm first of all, like I consider like so fortunate to be able to like direct it all. But um, I really, really love Sleepy Princess and the Demon Castle. And if you anybody hasn't seen it yet, please go watch it. I love it so much. And um, I really love Glipnir too. Like I love Glipnir and that's, that's just cause it's like my personal taste. It's like really up my alley. Like I'm just like, I want a season two so bad cause it's so dark and, and messed up. <laughs> and with, when, with, uh, with anime that you also have parts in that you are directing, are you directing yourself? For a lot of the stuff that like I direct myself anime wise, like I'm usually just like doing like utility or like bits. Um, so I'll direct myself on that. If it's something more substantial, like I'll have somebody else direct me for um for that <laughs> well because i know with uh like Leibner and city hunter you got to play young kaito and young shinju so yes so it's really it's really fun like first of all like i i just i love doing like little boy characters but also like kaito and shinji are my two favorite characters from those shows and like i want to be the kid version <laughs> yeah and um it worked out because it was like matching textures and stuff so i was like cool <laughs> And then uh, what was your experience with uh, working on the Trails games? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was it was crazy. Like, um, I love Shirley. I love Roselia, too, but I love Shirley so much. And um, I recorded for her when I still had red hair. So I was like, it's meant to be. Like, this is so cool. And she's psychotic. So um, it was super fun. But, like, I auditioned for a bunch of characters. And um, I'm still shocked that I got to play two of them. Like, that's wild to me but um it was really cool because working on, on those games with like that specific spread of characters because um for surely it's very close to my natural voice it's just like unhinged maybe like a little extra rasp and then Roselia is like my little girl range but then she has like my, my deep dummy mommy range too so I'm just like I'm tapped out there's all my stuff like right <laughs> right there for like um stuff that would be unique enough for me to like converse with myself so I was like oh this is so cool <laughs> what is the case with uh anime where you've had the like the most parts in a single series yeah like I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think like usually for um unless it's like bits and stuff like I'm I'm not like doing um a lot of the the plays I work they don't usually do like a lot of like double or triple casting um I think two characters in um Jujutsu Kaisen like I played um like the mom that got like grudged murdered <laughs> and then <laughs> spoilers and then um playing may may and then um in the hidden dungeon only i can enter i play two characters in that too but they didn't they didn't interact with each other so it's weird <laughs> in as far as anime goes like i've never really had to talk to myself yet in, right. in stuff so it's been very isolated <laughs> yeah i know that's like more rare to do with anime yeah yeah it happens in games sometimes it's like well but better make this different because <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know that uh, Chizuru Tachibana is a little bit kind of different than a lot of voice roles that you normally get. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, um, she's I love her personality because she's just like very soft spoken, like stoic, like kind of cold. But um, yeah, like the, the show has some stuff in it. And I was like, oh, how did you get yourself into the situation, my lady? Like, how did this happen? Um, like the fishing wire, I think it was. I was like, I have no idea how you managed to do this, but um, somebody help. <laughs> <laughs> But um, again, like nothing really shocks me, especially like having like done like games like Honey Pop, like so early on in my career. I'm like, this is this is fine. <laughs> and were you already familiar with um, Higurashi when you became involved with that, too? Yeah, like it's it's really cool. Like um, I again, like um, I remember when like the first Higurashi like came out like years and years ago. And um, so that was really cool. And I was like, oh, whoa, I get to be a part of this. It's like it was so funny because like you mentioned like um uh pretty like pretty boy detective like like club and like i had just voiced ray and then i had done this other like silver haired like professional like attractive character for like higurashi i'm like this is weirdly timed they like they look like they could be like the same character but in like different <laughs> different shows <laughs> another more uh well it's based on a game but um how, yeah. 
Atsuho and Sakura Wars. Yeah. Oh, I love her so much. I was so excited. She's got like the little fangy and I was like, oh yeah, like aggressive redhead. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> um, but like, it was really cool. Cause like, I really like her friendship with like Sakura because even though like she does have like tinges of jealousy there, like she really cares about her friendship and she wants it to be like healthy and she wants there to be like communication there. And she doesn't ever like treat her friend like the villain. She's just kind of dealing with her own emotional stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Do you think you uh, prefer doing like the strong, like loud woman roles? <laughs> I I like see. I just like yelling. I don't know. I don't know if you know this, Chris, but when I was um when I was a kid, I would go in the backyard and I would throw up my Barbie into the air and I would do blood curdling screams as she fell down. I would do that over and over again for like. A very long time to where I, I can't believe the neighbors didn't call the cops on me but um so like I just love doing like like combat or like yelling or like vocally like intensive um roles so like I love like the the hot-headed females because they get more of that they get to do a lot more of that but I just I just love acting and I like getting to be like all these characters and um you know the soft-spoken ones are nice too <laughs> I know it's a more unique credit uh because I talked to Judy out Judy Alice Lee and she's also part of see when your nightmares Yes. Oh, I, she's phenomenal in that podcast. I don't know if you listened yes. to it at all, Chris, but, um, I, I loved, um, it's my first, um, like I've done like radio plays before, but like, this was like my first ever like official podcast that I did. And, um, I auditioned for, um, Callie, um, who is like the main girl Harper's like twin sister. And I'm not going to spoil anything. Cause it's like really, really good storytelling, but, um, yeah, like I auditioned for multiple characters, but like, um, I was like, I really want Callie. Like I love Callie. Um, because there's so many different aspects of Callie and there's some crazy shit. I'm like, I really want to play Callie. And so I went really hard in my audition and, um, I got to, I I booked the part, which I was so excited about. And we recorded that over a span of like months and months and like getting to do it was really fun. Cause like I got, there's just, there's just a lot. I don't want to spoil anything, but I also got to do like a ton of like vocally intensive stuff and like creaturey shit. And I was like, this is so much fun. (laughs) This is going back to more uh, lighthearted, but I know there's so, a lot of like yeah. re- recent fan affinity with a uh, show by Rock too. Sumo. Yeah, I call Sumomone my sexy little squirrel. I was like, oh, a sexy little squirrel. Like, just <laughs> I love her. Um, and it is really cool because, like, uh, you know, getting to do sing like singing stuff, and like, um, we got to do a little bit in like, um, you know, soccer, soccer wars, but like, getting to do anytime we get to like dub songs is like really exciting, and um. Singing in character is fun, especially because Simone is just like, oh, like I'm so, I'm so sexy, sexy little squirrel. And just, it's really fun, like having that kind of little, little flavor to it. It was really fun because I remember Megan just be like, okay, just like, just sexier, just sexier. It's like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of a opposite side of that, the like sexy evil thing in Yasha Hime. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, again, I was a huge fan of Inuyasha. Inuyasha was my first ever anime that I knew was an anime because I would, um, you know, growing up, I'd come home from school. I'd watch like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, like Gundam Wing, like Sailor Moon, like everything that was like on Toonami. But um, because Inuyasha was on like Adult Swim, like, and I, I thought, you know, the other shows were just cartoons until I was like older. Like Inuyasha was the first show that I'd seen. I was like, ah, yes, this is actually an anime. I know what anime is. And um, I remember, like, I'd stay up late to, like, watch the episodes. And then the next day at school, like, I'd talk to my friends and be like, oh, my gosh, like, I can't believe Moroku did that. Or, oh, my gosh, Inuyasha pushed Kagome down the well. Like, I, but he loves her, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was, like, super, it was super cool um, to get to be part of Yashihime because, like, I, I love, I love that show so much. And um, getting to play, like, a villain in it was so cool because I always remember, like, Yara, like, the hair, like, like, yeah. The villains from like I'm the first like Inuyasha and I just I love the villain designs in that show and it was just really cool to get to be a part of it mm-hmm. and when, when you did start working in anime were there um was there like or has there been cases where you got starstruck in terms of who you were like cast with or <laughs> yes but I don't let people know like um so <laughs> The first time I worked with Jerry Jewell, I was like, oh my God, you're Kyo from Fruits Basket. Like, I didn't say that, but I was thinking it because I love his work. And um, it's kind of like the thing is like, I, I've loved 
everybody's work that I've gotten who've like been there before I started like acting um in the same sphere but I and and I'll let let them know as a colleague that I like the, their work, but I won't let them know like, hey, I was a fan of you when I was I was younger because I don't want to be weird. <laughs> but <laughs> but um yeah, it's been it's been very cool. And like um even though like I I've always like admire people's work, like I don't get like necessarily like star struck. I'm just like I love their work, but they I can't let them know that I'm like like that I I love their work because when I was younger. But um I play it cool, play it cool. <laughs> Mm -hmm. who, are you, who are you closest with then in the community? Um, I'd say like um, some of my closest friends would be like, um, you know, like uh, Marissa Lenti and like Alexis Tipton, like we're really good friends and like, um, like Amelie mm -hmm. um, and then like Damon Mills and of course Howard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And like, um, like Susie Young and um, yeah, but, but like you kind of like, it, it's weird because um, a lot of times we would see each other um, at conventions, but because conventions and like that'd be sometimes the first time that you've met somebody that you've like worked with for a really long time and you've never just never seen each other face to face. So, um, yeah, like it's it's interesting because like I haven't gotten to see many people until recently because cons just started like back up, of course, like being very safe and like vaxxed and masked and everything. But um yeah, like it's it's fun to get to like work with everybody and then get to see them. So the like acquaintances and friends with a lot of people, um, probably closest sphere would be like them and like um like Alejandra Saab and and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And is there a like a single wildest fan experience you've had? Like thankfully, like I haven't had any like weird, like toxic experiences, but um I did have um I believe it was um a young girl who was um cosplaying as Miss Joke and she came up to my booth and like she told me that like you know like it was her favorite character and she like started crying and I was like oh my gosh and, and this is really sweet and like those kinds of interactions are just like you know really special or um like that and I remember like um forever forever ago when I did like probably like my first ever convention I think it was like neon con in like Ohio I did like a panel like on how to like get into VO um just be like and at the time like it was like all online like I was nowhere near as experienced as I am now but I was just giving the information that I had at the time and like be like here's what like I do and stuff and um years later I had somebody come up to me from that panel and was like hey I was at your panel in Yoncon like this date and like you inspired me to start my own YouTube channel now it's my business and like I'm like I have all these subscribers and everything I was like oh my god that's amazing and so it was really cool just to get to see the, like hey like you never know like who you can inspire like what people will, will do with like you know information you put out there so I was like that's so cool <laughs> yeah so is there yeah. anything is there anything else that's um upcoming or like brand new that you're part of that you can talk about or um yeah I mean I guess like anything that I can talk about will currently be like on my Twitter there's there's some stuff that's happening but we'll see <laughs> when it comes out but um yeah like uh I'm I'm doing some more conventions this year which um I am doing rocket con next weekend and then, and that's in San Diego. And then, um, I'll be doing some other conventions again, my Twitter or Facebook will have all the information about like stuff like that. Kind of briefly touching basic on the panel thing is like, you know, I, uh, when I first started acting, like this was back when I was like 15 year old baby before I even like sat down and Googled, like how to become a voice actor or really pursued anything. Um, I went to an anime convention, I went to a panel and, um, I can't remember who the actors were, nor would I say their names if I did remember them, but they had a voice acting panel and it was so discouraging to anybody who wanted to try voice acting that it honestly scared me to the point where I was like, oh, I can never do this. And, um, I gave up for like, I was like, oh, I guess I'm not going to do this. And then that's why, like, I didn't really start till I was like 16 because I'm, I'm stubborn. I was like, no, I'm going to try. So, <laughs> um, I started doing it anyway, but that's why, like, I just in general, like always want to encourage people who are interested in it because you never know what can happen. And like, you really can like do anything you put your mind to and you can accomplish anything that you put your mind to. And that's why I try to be like more positive about because like, no, like it's hard. Like it's definitely really hard, but that doesn't mean you can't do it if it's something that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Chris, my brain just snowballed and I just word vomited it at you, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my final question is always asking, what do you want your 
wide receiver to be kind of ties into that, I guess. Oh my gosh. Well, I just like brain synced you then. So, um, yeah, I guess like, um, without going into too, too much detail without taking up too much time, like, um, I, you know, like I, I grew up like very poor. Like I grew up from like a very hard life. Like my mom was like a single mother. Like I didn't know my biological father. Like, There's all kinds of crazy stuff. And, um, I'm actually like, I'm, I'm in therapy now. And like, you know, I'm, I, I'm recovering like from PTSD and like childhood trauma and all kinds of stuff. So it's like, I guess like what I want my legacy to be is like, you know, like just never give up, like whatever your passions or your dreams are, like never give up, like keep going. And um, if I can overcome like the things that I've overcome in my life, I hope I can inspire people to like chase their dream and like just go for it. And um, because again, like you can do the things, it just might take time. It might not happen the way you expect it to or want it to. But um, that's kind of what I want my legacy to be. Just like go do the thing. (laughs) And is there something that you want people to take away from your performances so far? Yeah, I guess like, um, I hope that everybody like can just, I mean, I guess like for so much of my life, like I use, you know, video games and like fantasy and like, like anime and stuff to kind of like, as like escapism in a way for like what was going on in my life. I hope that whatever people are going on through, like through whether, whether you're listening to my performance or you're watching like the original Japanese, like, I hope that it is just you know, you're enjoying the story and you're enjoying it. It's providing whatever for you, like whatever you need in, in, you know, in your life at that moment, like whether it be comfort or adventure or fun or just like bonding with friends. Like I hope, you know, um, I put my heart in my performances. So if you are listening, like, I hope you can feel that and like you're enjoying it. (laughs) Well, thank you. I'm glad that we got to do this. Yeah, same. Thank you so much, Chris. This was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Is there something that you want to say to the uh, Comey subreddit? Oh, uh, well, hello, Comey subreddit. I hope, you know, you enjoyed this interview. This was super fun for me. And um, I, I don't know, man, like, I hope that like we get to do a season two and um, I'm super excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. You've been awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll be sure to uh, send it to you once I have it up as well. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Yay. (laughs) Yeah, it was great meeting you. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.